In this lecture, I am going to create get API with parameter in Node.js. I will create blog.js API endpoint. So let's open our blog.out.js file to add a new route for our blog.js endpoint. Route method will be get and UI will be our base URL slash blog slash blog ID as a route parameter. We already have slash blogs before every blog route. So for our blog.js endpoint, we just need to provide blog ID as a route parameter here. And it will execute blog controller's details method. Now let's open our blog.controller.js file and then let's export a method called details. Let's get request and response as a parameter to this method. I will open a try catch block inside this details method for error handling. And if any error occurs then I will return a JSON response with error data. In the previous lecture during GetBlocks API endpoint, I already told you that we can get the data from our Mongoose collection with the help of aggregate method or with the help of find method. And in the previous lecture, I forget to select underscore id field and create a field for each block. So I'll pass underscore id1 and create a one inside this project object to select underscore id and created a field for each block along with other fields. Now if I execute our getbox API endpoint from postman you see now we have created a field and underscore id field for each block. Now let's get back to our details method and I'm gonna store the blog id which is present inside our route parameter to a variable called blog underscore id and we can get the route parameter data with the help of request params object so I'll call request.params and then the parameter name which is blog underscore id and then I'll store the blog data to a variable called blog and we can get the blog data with the help of blog models find method and inside this find method we need to provide the condition I'm going to get the blog data with this id that's why I'll provide a conditions underscore id is equal to this blog id and this will return as a promise so I will use avid here because we are using avid here I need to add async before this method and after getting the block data I will return a json response with message block successfully fetched and I will return the block data to this data key and now let's open postman to execute our block data endpoint let's open a new tab and then let's provide the request url which is our base url slash block slash blog id as a route parameter let's get an id from our blog uh, get blocks api endpoint i'm going to take this id and i will provide this id as a route parameter for our blog data endpoint you see now we are getting the blog data with this id inside an array but we need the data inside an object so we can call find one method instead of find method to get the data inside an object now if i execute our blog data endpoint again you see now we are getting the blog data inside an object and if you want to load category data and user data for the blog then you can simply call populate method and instead this populate method you need to provide the path if i open our blog model you see we stored category id to this category field and the type of this field is mongoose schema types object id that's why if i provide this category inside populate method then this will load category data for the blog also if you want to load user data for the blog then you can simply call another popular method and then you can pass this created by field inside this popular method to load user data for the blog. Now if I execute our blog data endpoint again, you see now we are getting category data and user data for the blog. Okay, but I am not going to use find one method for our blog data endpoint because I am going to make the structure of this JSON same as the structure what we are getting in our get blocks API endpoint for each blog. So I'm going to use aggregate method instead of find one method. So I'll comment out this lines of code. And we already used aggregate method inside our list method during getblocks API endpoint. So I'll take the code from our list method. So I'm gonna take this lines of code from here. And I will use inside our DDoS method. So inside this query variable. I'm storing an array and inside this array I will provide all the condition and I'm going to load 
user data for the blocks. So I'm providing lookup here. In aggregate method, we can load the data from our relationship model with the help of lookup method. And inside this lookup method, we need to provide the conditions. So we are going to load user data from users collection. That's why we are providing from users and the local field is created by which is present inside our blog model. And foreign field is underscore id which is present inside our users collection. And we are going to load user data to creator field that's why I'm providing as creator here. And I'm going to load user data inside an object that's why I'm providing unwind dollar creator here. And I'm going to load category data for the blog also. So I'm providing another lookup object here. And we're uh, going to provide the details inside this lookup object. So we are going to load category data from categories collection that's why I'm providing from categories here and the local field is category which is present instead of our blog, mo uh, blog model you see we stored category added to this category field that's why I'm providing local field category here and the foreign field is underscore ID which is present instead of our categories collection and we are going to load category data to this category details field that's why I'm providing as creator here and we are going to load category details instead of an object that's why I'm providing unwind dollar category details here okay now we have to pass this query variable to our block uh, block models aggregate matter so i'm going to load block data to a variable called block and we can get the data with aggregate method and then inside this aggregate method we need to provide the conditions so i'll provide this query variable inside this aggregate method and this will return as a promise so i'll use avoid here and now let's execute our block data endpoint from postman you see we are getting list of blocks that is because we did not pass the conditions with the id because we need to select the block with this id so we need to add another conditions inside this query id so i will add another object and this is object i will provide a match condition and is this match we need to provide underscore id and we need to provide the blog id here so in aggregate method if you want to search the data with this with the id then we need to provide the id to mongo schema object id method so let's call mongoose dot schema so i already provided id inside our list method so let's take the code from our list method Thing, yeah, I provided ID instead of list method, so I'll take the code from here. So, if you want to filter the data, then I mean, if you want to filter the data with underscore ID field, then we need to provide the ID inside this mongoose types object ID method. Okay, so we need to provide the ID which is our blog ID. Okay, now this will return the block with this id from our block collection okay now if i execute our block data endpoint you see now we are getting only one block with this id okay the id of this underscore id and the route parameter id is same you see and we are getting the data inside an array right so we need to get the data inside an object so i'll do it later first of all what I'll do, I'll make the structure of this JSON same as the structure we are getting for each block instead of our get blocks API endpoint. So I'm going to take the code from our list method. So I will take this project object because we need to select specific fields for our block data. So I'm going to add project inside this query array and i'm going to select underscore id created at title short description description image from block collection and from category collection we need to select name and slug field or from users collection we are going to select email first name and last name field okay now if i execute our block data endpoint again now you see a structure sorry we need to call block data endpoint you see now the structure is similar to our get blocks in api endpoints each block json but we are not getting this image url okay so okay before that you see this is returning the data inside an array so if any data found with this block id then 
this will return the data incident array so I will check ok first of all make it blocks because we are getting lots of blocks so let's make it blocks and then I will check if the length of this block is greater than 0 that means we are getting data with this blog id ok so that's why I am checking if blocks dot length is greater than 0 that means we are getting some blocks with the id which is present inside our route parameter and if no block found then we will return a json response with message no block found and the json status will be 400 and data will be blank object ok and if any block found then we will return a json response with message block successfully fetched and we are going to send only first record because we are going to get in, we are going to get the data in certain array that's why we are going to take the first record now let's execute our block data send point again you see now we are getting the data in certain array okay but we are not getting image url for the block right you see when we are calling our getbox api endpoint we are getting image url for each block but when we are calling our block data send point we are not getting image url for the block yet we have um, we have this image url inside our block models as a virtual field and we have two json virtuals2 and two object virtuals2 but we are not getting image url for the block when we are calling aggregate method for that what we need to do we need to call hydrate method so we can call block models dot hydrate and is this hydrate if i pass this document then this should load image url for the block ok it is not i think ok let's check our dist method yeah i think I mistake the spelling of hydrate. Let's execute our block data endpoint. Now you see we are getting image URL for the block. Okay. So our block data endpoint is successfully completed, and I'm going to make some changes inside our create method. After creating the new block, we are returning a JSON response with newly created block data but the structure of this json is not good it is not the same as our block data endpoint so i'm going to uh, make the structure is same for our newly created block okay if i create a new block you see the structure of the json is not same as the structure we are returning for the block from our block data endpoint so we are going to make some changes inside our create method so we'll take all the code from our details method so where is our details method here is our details method so I will take all the codes from our details method and I will paste inside our create method ok and I will remove this lines of code from here because we are no longer using exec populate method so let's paste this code and instead of this mongoose types object id I will pass newly created blog id so let's pass blog data dot underscore id which will be newly created blog id ok and we are going to we are going to return the first blocks so to load image well we need to call blog model hydrate method ok so let's provide this block document into this hydrate method now if i execute our create method again now you see the structure of this json is same as the structure we are returning from our block data endpoint so that's it for our block data endpoint in the next lecture i'm going to create update api in node.js to update block data so stay connected